I hate when the camera does that. Ten minutes later, still lying there breathing. Sickest thing I've ever seen. In my opinion, it just wasn't necessary, said Torres. The pet was rushed to an animal welfare hospital but died from its injuries on Saturday morning. Hometown police announced that they were investigating the incident but refused to comment. I wonder why you just shot a girl's dog in the head. I don't know why you would pull out a gun when you had so many other options, said Ixon's sister Christy Scalaba, S-C-I-A-L-A-B-B-A. Good luck. And to shoot a dog in front of a child, that's going to scare her for the rest of her life. Um, there's a Facebook page called, page called Justice for Apollo. You're going to want to go there and support that vigorously. And it mentions other instances that this has happened in the German Shepherd in DeKalb County. And we've covered them a few times on the show. <sighs> Call them, complain, let them know. It's not okay to shoot a girl's dog in there. Why didn't it taser the dog if it was really seen as such a threat? Makes no sense. CBS Cleveland. Guys, this is the one that Christelle really wanted to get it. It's the next story that I... I it's the dump cap of the month. This one, she was... What, what do you got to say about this particular one? Oh, uh, you just have to pay attention to the story. It, it's great. She, she, was, she was... I knew she was going to think this might get the golden dump cap of the, the year. The, uh, the uh, what's the... The, the, the dunce cap of the year award because it is that stupid fortunately for the stupid person in it much to uh, Christelle's sorrow guess what they don't do Christelle they don't list teens names in the paper now I got the block that the kid is on but I don't have a lot of information I didn't really have a last name I'm sure I could have found it it's fine it gets the runner up but yeah it's stupid. Lexington, Kentucky. Uh, a 15-year-old in Kentucky suffered second-degree burns after rubbing alcohol on his chest and lighting himself on fire in imitation of the popular Facebook and YouTube fire challenge videos. Now, Christelle, and the page keeps refreshing, so you're not going to want to go to it. It's an annoying sight. Christelle, I, there was a bonfire once, and I took a running jump, curled into a ball, jumped over the fire, landed, and sloppily rolled back up to my feet. That was a challenge. There was a chance I was going to hit the fire, not make it over, catch my hair on fire. There's all kinds of options. Is, is there any challenge to what's going to happen if you cover yourself in a flammable substance such as alcohol and light yourself on fire? Is there any other way that it can end? Because isn't that what challenge means? I think they've changed the definition of challenge here. Lexington police said the officers were called to the 3600 block of Apian Way, doesn't give the address, to assist a teenager who had burned himself after watching the fire challenge, having uh, uh, used his uh, time to get a dictionary and look up the word challenge, I guess, to buy rubbing alcohol. The teen whose name was not given, oh, yeah, Christelle is like weeping, mimicked the online videos by pouring rubbing alcohol on his body and then setting himself on fire. Now, nobody did it. Nobody did it to him, Christelle. It wasn't something that, uh, it was a mugging. It wasn't something even his friends did while he was drunk. No, he did this, I believe, sober to himself. Unbearable, yeah, basically, said the teen who suffered second degree burns, which isn't funny. Literally after I got put out, it was already blistering. It's just hard. Videos of the fire challenge also shows teens spraying themselves with aerosol cans before lighting portions of their body on fire in order to singe off their own hair. If you're so inclined to singe off your own hair, I'm sure there's other ways to do it, but the videos show the, the videos never show the aftermath of lighting oneself on fire. No, it's it's funny how that always gets edited out. Just watching it and never seeing what ended and just being childish, the teen said of his actions. So at least he learned from it, I guess. One of the firefighters who took the teenager to the hospital said that the burns suffered by the boy were affecting him for the rest of his life. Also not funny. After getting second and third degree burns, it mentions you have to watch sunburns in the future because uh, they can be worse. I know they burnt the tar out of my upper shoulders once at Lollapalooza and I still watch how bad this gets it now. 
You can get caught on fire and die, the teen said, Christelle. Your house can get caught on fire. Wherever you are at can get caught on fire. See how smart he is. Why'd you want to give him the dunce cap of the month award? He... Well, no, but but we I guess it is time for the dunce cap of the month. So uh, she she was humming it. We might we might as well get it started here. But if is there is there any like, you'd like to give to the universal sound of stupidity for Arnie Bloom? They're given to the uh, teen severely burnt. And friends, that brings us to the dunce cap of the month award winner. Dum-dee-dum-dee-dum-dee. Dum dum yes, friends, it is time for the Dunce Camp of the Month. Here's what I got for you, friends. Dum-dee-dum-dee-dum. Dum the poor door. That's what I've got. The, the poor door. Trying to even talk about this has made me laugh for two days in a row. The poor door. New York apartment block will have separate doors for the rich and the poor. Daily Sheep or Chris Carrington. It gets Christelle knocking at the poor door. Oh, God. Segregation, Christelle, is alive and well and lives in New York. Let me introduce you to the poor door. Now, friends, if you were writing fiction and you had an editor and you wrote this next paragraph down... People would intrinsically, especially your editor, he'd be like, you got to tone that down. No one's going to believe in real life that somebody would actually say something like this. It, you you got to tone it down. Nobody would ever say. No one ever said that the goal was for integration of these populations. Those people, Christelle. Said David Von Spreckelson, the senior vice president at Toll Brothers. It should have been Troll Brothers. So now you have politicians talking about that, saying how horrible these back doors are. I think it's unfair to expect very high income owners, oh Buffy, who paid a fortune to live in their building to have to be in the same boat as low income renters who are very fortunate to live in a new building in a great neighborhood. So Christelle, do you know you can catch poverty? Now think about it. It's not. It's it's one thing that you that you you have a better apartment than somebody else that lives in the apartment because you're a high earner. That's fine. But what they're saying, Christelle, is that you can't use the gardens, you can't use the play areas, you can't even use the same door. You have to go to a door that is literally in the back alley to go home, while other people get to use, I guess, what would be the rich door. It says, like many cities, New York is not a cheap place to live. The Extel Development Company has recently had plans approved to build a 33-story apartment block in New York. Now, you might say, hey, it's their building. They can do whatever you they want. Sam, you're a libertarian. Yes, I am. However, in order to secure tax breaks, now let's pause. The low-income worker, I'm not talking about somebody who's on welfare by choice and is going to sell crack out of the gym. These are people that have a job, as I'll get to in a minute. They have a job. They pay taxes. This place took tax breaks and building allowances, therefore negating my libertarian streak. The Upper West Side building will have a mixture of luxury and affordable apartments. No problem there. 55 apartments were, have been deemed affordable against 219 aimed at the luxury market. No problem with that whatsoever. That's America. Extella have designated the 55 affordable units as a separate entity within the same building. Also, you know, the, the, if, if it catches fire or something, it'll just avoid that half of the building because it's separate. This means those apartments will have their own entrance. The poor door. In this entrance, that is the door down a back alley. Well-heeled residents will be able to access their homes through the front entrance directly from the street. The New York Times, here's what's in here. And it, um, when a playroom opened up at Michael Riley's Upper West Side building two years ago, he asked the concierge for a key to the space so that his toddler could play there. The concierge's answer stunned him. It was out of bounds for him and his child. Mr. Riley's building, the Windermere West End, as a link, a luxury rental, is one of several in the city. 
that prohibit rent-regulated tenants from using services like gyms, playrooms, and rooftops to rooftop gardens. Some co-op and condo buildings have similar restrictions. Developers say amenities are a marketing tool to lure in high-paying tenants, and they say that rent regulation makes rules offering to such tenants problematical. Why would a rich person care if you're pumping iron beside him? Why are you not being allowed to use the gym somehow some front to them? That doesn't make any sense. What they're trying to do is get the poor people to move out and keep the tax break. That's what they're trying to do. You can't catch poverty. Um, Christelle, have you ever caught poverty? No. No. Maybe. I mean, if you can catch being rich, maybe they should let them go into the same door because there's more rich people there. There's only 55 to 219. Seems logical. You can go in the front door and the, you can catch rich, and then the whole building will be able to pay a fortune. That should that would be better. It said, Extel is not the only company who are using poor doors. It's hard to even read the poor door to restrict who gets access to high-end amenities and that apartment buildings now offer. Stellar Management, who could have also gotten the award, but since they already had the practice in place, I couldn't give the award to them or it wouldn't be for this month. Then I'd be getting a dunce cap. This is Stellar Management, who also does it. You can call and let them know how much you like them pour your stock out of anything they're into. We, also, we always had the roof, said Lisa Kirchner, a singer who lives in Windermere in a studio apartment with no kitchen. She uses the hot plate in lieu of a stove and washes her dishes in the bathroom sink. So she works. The sponsor doesn't want the tenants to have access to the additional luxury services, said Mark Zabrowski, a broker who sells bundles of rent-regulated apartments to investors. His goal is to get him out of the apartment. Um, listen to this. It says... Um, Advocates for tenants views the policies as a way to demoralize people who pay less for going the, the going rate. Uh, again, Mr. Riley from the last article said, We're the only ones who had a kid that was age appropriate, and that was just mean, he said. A personal trainer and actor, he's got two jobs, who pays $1,250 a month for the studio apartment he shares with his wife and son. So, Christelle, it wasn't enough that this man paid his taxes. They gave a tax break to the people that won't let him use the amenities in his own building. So it says here again, I understand that there are people who have worked exceptionally hard to buy their own home, and I get why they may be a bit peeved about renters using the amenities in the building. However, it is tax breaks and building allowances payable because there is affordable housing on the block. So friends, here we go. This here is your dunce cap of the month winner, and I'm gonna, we both doodled on this one. Much love went into this, Extel. No poor allowed to be around rich. Here's a, that's a soccer ball Christelle has made here. No play for poor kids. My bodybuilder, is a the ball. Bodybuilder, dude. He looks more like a ninja turtle, but yeah, I did all right. No workout room for poor. Welcome to Extel Hell. And the poor door. I had to draw the poor door. So this is going to be mailed to them. And I'm going to read you the award, the certificate. Uh, the opacity's killed on that so that I could write over it. But that's the picture of the poor door that you're going to see if you uh, go to uh, Firefox and type it in. The dunce cap of the month for, month for Extel. Uh, while haughty glances and undeserved airs of superiority it's quite common to people the world over. You at Extel Development Company have outdone even the most vile by not only disgracing the lower income earners in the building that you own, but you had the gall to get a special tax help for doing so. Not only content to accept the tax help, you also furthered the practice of the poor door Taken rooftop gardens away as options for those who also have jobs that may pay less. Closed gyms and even child playrooms. For these rotten actions, you win this month Dunce Cap of the Month Award. Now again, I know that uh, they, in the same place may not have done all the same things. The point is, besides the top of the hat, the point is, this is how you stop this kind of insanity. You send out dunce caps, you make certificates, you make videos, you go over all the stories I told. 
contact the people that are responsible for the stupidity and let them know you heard about it and you don't want to take it anymore. That's why I do these shows, friends. You're listening to The Correct Views, and you can help me do these shows by donating at thecorrectviews at hotmail.com. You can go to the Media Speaks, look up the work of Kyle Court, D. Lake, and myself. You can go to uh, the, the Seacrest Inn in Sandusky, Ohio, and tell Vicky that you heard about it from TCV, The Correct Views. Thanks for listening, friends. That is today's Dunce Cap of the Month Award. <laughs>